high dynamic range photography is a blast. The picture you guys looked at in the intro of this video were manipulated. So what I mean by that is either one single shot or a bunch of shots were merged together and I play with them with uh, Lightroom, Photomatix, Photoshop to just give the result we just saw. So HDL photography is fun and can be done many ways. So what I'll do today is I'll show you how I do it, my workflow and how I set up my Canon 7D to take HDR shots. So I would like to start with showing you exactly how I set up my camera to be able to take these shots. Let me now show you how I will set up my Canon 7D to take HDR pictures. The first thing I want to make sure is I am on AV, so the aperture priority. The reason being I want a ISO and F-sub to be fixed and I want the shutter speed to be doing the work when I will be changing my stops. And I want my picture to take raw picture mainly because there's a lot more things we can do with raw picture when we post-process uh, the pictures. And I want to make sure I'm on high speed continuous shots mainly because if I'm taking quick shot, if I can, because the shutter speed may take very uh, quick shots, I want to make sure they are sequence and not delayed. The main component here is the exposure compensation. So what I want to make sure here is I have three bars so by moving the top wheel we can do that and then the bars can change so you'll see you can take three shots because one shot represent one bar so then basically if I set it up this way one shot will be taking a minus two stop the other one at zero, the other one is plus two and then if I just move it this way, it's going to be minus one, zero, and plus one. So if you're taking lots of shot, you can first come here, and it moves as a unit, so it's very, very nice. So you can set up a main to be at minus three, so you take one shot, minus four, minus three, minus two, and then you move it back to zero, and then you get minus one, zero, plus one, and then you go back there, and plus two, three, and four. So the advantage of doing this is now you have nine shots with one stop difference between each. So once you actually process that those nine pictures together, you can choose the one that works for you and get so much more information into your picture. All right? So once that's done, you're happy with those settings, you can go to your menu if you want to the camera uh, user settings. Go in there and register what you just did. C1, C2, C3 is very up to you. Mine is set up on C3. So what I mean by that is once I go on top of my camera on the wheel here, I can go on C3 and then in my case it's ready to go AV, F-stop, ISO and everything. So what I do sometimes is I go out it's bright and sunny so I just bring down my ISO to whoops, bring down to 200 let's say whatever it is and then it's easy just to change one setting and redo the whole thing. All right. So now let's go through uh, the workflow and uh, I'll show you um, with the software I use, how I do, uh, how I come with some HDR pictures. We are now looking into Lightroom 4. So this is the latest version of Lightroom as is right now. So it is easier to look and understand HDR if we look at the histogram and if we look at the picture and see the potential and what we can do with them. So what I'll do is I'll take like well, I'll take uh, let's take this picture for example. So in this picture you can tell like the sky is pretty white. You now it's kind of a gray uh, overcast day and uh, that like this scene had a lot of statue in it and it was a very interesting feel to uh, that market. So I wanted to capture those statues with the clouds which I thought would bring a very dramatic effect. So to do that I could have taken this picture or this picture. So the difference here is this picture I can actually see details in the sky but I don't see much of the statue. As in versus this one I see the statue but I don't see much of the sky. And if I take it brighter well you don't see anything in the sky and it's blown away and it's super white. So the idea of an HDR picture is to manipulate your picture so you get the best of the best. 
So you bring the details in the sky and lighten the statue so you, we can see the details of the statue. So taking this sky and merging it with that type of details and maybe a little bit more details everywhere, like take those shadows out a little bit. So there's two ways to do it. We can take a single file and uh, let's take this one. It's always easier to like uh, manipulate a picture which is a little underexposed versus a picture which is overexposed. So if I go into my develop model here into Lightroom 4, I will have a lot of options because I am shooting raw. So it's very important if you're going for that type of picture and you want to manipulate only one picture and get the highlights as much as you can, make sure you're shooting raw so you get a lot of options here and a lot of uh, freedom. So I will take my highlights here and bring it down so you'll see the difference in the sky here. So I want to bring that sky darker. Now the shadows, I want to see the statue a little bit. So I bring the shadows up like this and give us a little bit of clarity here to make things a little crisper. Now you can play with the contrast if you want to, like a little darker or lighter. I like it a little lighter like this. And the exposure if you will feel like it's too dark or too light or whatever it is. So this is one way to play with the picture. Now what you guys can do is use the brush here and I will make a very bad job of it, but let's say we want the sky to be a little uh, with a little bit more details in the clouds here and then uh, obviously you will take your time doing that a little better than this, but um, what you guys can do is do this and merge the highlights a little bit again and then exposure up a little bit or down and the clarity up in there. So now we have a very dramatic sky behind the statue, so you can do the same thing if you guys feel like it and do with the the flooring and stuff like that. Bring a little bit more detail in there, right? Uh, now you can do some slight change with that brush or you can do dramatic change like I am doing right now. So once again, if you just take your time a little bit more, you'll see you, there is a lot of potential here and uh, you can do a very good job. Now I'm just super quick because I'm just showing you guys how it works. Okay, so this is a way to maybe a little vignette in there. So this is the way to do one HDR picture with one single file. Now the idea of taking an HDR picture will be taking a picture with as much detail as we can to have the best quality that we can. So I have this sequence of three picture here that we looked at uh, just before I started showing you guys with uh, Lightroom. So we get the details with the stop, right? So this is my zero, my plus two, and my minus two. So what I want to show you guys here a little bit is the information I'm losing. So all I'm going to do here is press Option key on the Mac and left click. And then if I bring my black here, everything you see is black is the information that we are losing so it's clipping if you look at the Instagram now the Instagram is all out of there on the left side if I bring that back in the middle now I don't lose much information the information I lose is a little bit in there if I look in there I can't see much it's information that I lost now if I do the same thing with the bright picture you'll see I'm essentially losing the whole sky so I am um, losing all that information but at the same time I am gaining information I have information everywhere else so we're lacking of information here and we're lacking of information in the sky in this picture so what we're gonna do is we can select these three and export them to Photomatix Pro so the idea will be using this three picture Photomatix Pro it's a third uh, party software if you want that will take these three picture and merging them together and it will take the information in the sky and replacing the sky and the light picture with that information and vice versa right so photomatics will take every single bit of information missing in the picture and will put them together in some area will have tons of information because in the middle here it wasn't lacking anywhere right so we're gonna have a lot of information from photomatics pro 
Now this software is a good software. This is a version 4.2, way better than the older version. And I would highly suggest you guys look into it if you're looking into an HDR software. There is tons on the market, but this is from far my favorite. And the reason being is there is a lot of freedom here. You can see I'm scrolling on the right side and there's a lot, a lot of effects, tons of effects you can choose from, like very dramatic to creative to black and white. Sometimes the black and whites are pretty good, uh, give a pretty good result. To uh, You can just take two images if you want and choose the one you want. And then uh, you can take something which is a little bit more natural look. So if I were to take picture for, let's say, a real estate company that hire me to take picture of uh, buildings or inside of certain uh, apartments they want to rent, for example, well, Photomatics Pro, this 4.2 version will be able to give you a very natural look that give you a nice picture that's not like too creative or crazy like this because you don't want to look at something too crazy when you're looking at a picture of uh, an apartment to rent. So it is very grainy here. You can tell the sky is super grainy and right now the photo is not fully rendered so the result that we see now it's not the result we'll get into uh, Lightroom. Um, so basically what I'll do here, I'm just gonna take this super like uh, unnatural picture like and maybe take this version. I kinda like the sky and the brightness and everything. So I'm gonna save and re-import and the good thing about Photomatics Pro is there's a plugin that works with Lightroom so I can easily export the three picture that I selected into Photomatics Pro and then once I'm done with it, it re-imports straight into my library into Lightroom. Here it is. So now if you look at the sky, it is greeny, yes, but not as greeny as it was when we actually look into Photomatics. So now we have that very, like, crazy look to it. And then what we can do is play with it, if you guys feel like it, if you're not totally satisfied. We want that sky to be a little bit more crazy, a little bit more clarity will probably help. We can bring a little bit more shadows into it, maybe. And then basically, no, maybe not so much, maybe just a little like this. And then if I'm happy with this, actually the highlights, I don't like this guy, it's a little too dark. We'll go like this, bring the clarity a little down, and then maybe a little vignette. And then that gives us a super unnatural look. So now if I look, I have a lot of details everywhere in that statue. I'm not lacking in details here. I can see the details behind into that thing behind here in the sky it's full of details if I look at the sky even in this picture I don't even have as close as the details we have into the HDR files so basically HDR combine this this to give the sky here so we combine the three picture to give that look so another example and uh, what I did is I took a picture of Rachel here into the Coombs taxi and it's uh, very nice. I'm not lacking any details at all. You can see the radiator there and the sky and everything. It's a very good black and white HDR picture. Now if I look at the original picture here, well once again here I have all the details in the radiator that I got into the plus two, um, the plus two stop. As in if I look when I get the minus two stop to get the sky in that one, I can't see anything in there. So that's what I like about the HDR files because now I have all the details in the radiator plus all the details in the sky. So HDR is a lot of fun. There is many other software to explore and try with. Now I showed you two ways to do HDR. Uh, the proper way which will be using a bunch of pictures together to bring all the details and much more information. Now if you look at my graph here it's pretty much tons of information in the middle or choose one single picture image and then just play with it and work with it a lot with Lightroot 4 so once again there's a lot of things you can do and hopefully this is useful for you guys if we want to bring your photography to another level to another direction you can make some very interesting picture you can be super creative that way Feel free to ask us questions, uh, email us if you want to, and if you have any other questions, any other tutorials, if you have any questions about Lightroom or Photomatics, feel free to ask.